We are swimming in data, too much to comprehend at times. Matthias Shapiro walks us through the visualization techniques that can be used to figure out what a data set is trying to tell us. Enjoy! Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. My name is Matthias Shapiro, and this is I Once Was Blind, Building an Information Visualization that Means Something. Now, I love this topic because we've got these uh, computers that bring in all sorts of information, all sorts of knowledge, but there's a problem with knowledge. It's that knowledge does not actually mean understanding intuitively. This is the bailout bill. It's basically a big list of who gets how much money, but can you tell me how much we're spending on roads and bridges? I'll give you a hint. It's right there. <laughs> Tons of information and absolutely no understanding. But if we turn this into a visualization, all of a sudden, we can see it's up there in the corner, it's $30 billion, but we can see how much it is in terms of transportation and infrastructure, and in terms of the bailout as a whole. All of a sudden, all this information suddenly becomes understanding. So, how can we do this kind of thing ourselves? Well, the first step is to ask a specific question. We want our question to be able to tell a story. Um, the human mind can understand stories a lot better than anything else. And so we want that story to be something like, how many men did uh, Napoleon lose on his march to Moscow? Which is answered with this graphic. We've got uh, the brown line showing how many started out with. He loses them there. He loses them back. Uh, I could give you the numbers, but it wouldn't make quite the impact. Uh, with the visualization, we see the scope of the losses. So the next step is to start gathering information. These are all great places to get some information, but you want to remember that if the information you're gathering isn't telling your story, then it's not really that useful to you. Uh, as a rule of thumb, I like to stick to three dimensions of information. Uh, we see in three dimension, dimensions, and we also understand information in smaller bits. Uh, when we gather more than we need, we risk, uh, run the risk of putting unnecessary details in the story we're trying to tell. Once we have our information, then we apply a metric. A metric is basically taking one piece of data and applying it to some sort of visual dimension. This is a basic size metric where we have bigger numbers represented by larger circles. Uh, in the next slide, we have Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven visualized using a program called Wordle where the common words show up more frequently. Uh, size is really intuitive for people to understand, but be careful. If you've ever uh, put information in a bar graph and no one understood it, you're using the size metric because you thought it uh, it meant everything. Color is great for enormous sets of data. Uh, it gives a good impression and it helps us to see um, gradations of information as they move along. If we apply this to something like the stock market, it really doesn't even need any explanation. It was a bad day. We can see that healthcare, <laughs> we can see that healthcare didn't do too bad and we've got a couple of outliers, but really n no one doesn't understand this graph. Okay, uh, the next metric is location. If you've ever seen a map, you've seen a location metric. If you've ever picked a seat on an airplane, you've seen a location metric. This is a metric of this room with a little social commentary at the bottom. It was really, really late. <laughs> this is uh, a visualization of all of the flight patterns in a single day. Uh, because we're using location, we can see hubs, we can see, oh, there's a lot more flight in the, in the east, flight density in the east than there is in the west, that kind of thing. Uh, then we have networks. Networks are great for, for binary data. Either you're connected to Kevin Bacon or you're not connected to Kevin Bacon. And be careful with, with uh, network visualizations because if you get more than 100 or 200, it starts to just become kind of a mess. This is a visualization of my Facebook friends, as a matter of fact. Um, as, as my friends are connected to each other, you see higher density, very closely connected uh, thing over there. Yeah, isn't that great? Um, they actually correspond pretty well to different parts of my life. A time metric, if you've ever seen a, a timeline like this or an animation is basically just time mapped to uh, the time that you're living in, usually sped up or slowed down. This is, next slide is a visualization of how many people named their child Matthew. We see it wasn't all that popular in the first part of the century and then it takes a huge spike in the 70s and 80s, which is why I stopped calling myself Matt and started calling myself Matthias in college. Um, <laughs> 
But we're going to want to remember that through all of this, we want to tell a story. So how much is a trillion dollars? Here's a story about that. Well, there's a hundred dollars, and if we package these up into a little something we can fit in our pocket, we have ten thousand dollars. And if we grab enough of those and throw it into my gym bag, we have a hundred a uh, million dollars. If we get enough of those, we need a forklift, we have a hundred million dollars. If we have enough of those to fill a smart, small storage area, we have a billion dollars. And a billion dollars here and a billion dollars there, and pretty soon we're talking about some real money. <laughs> That's a trillion dollars. Notice that the pallets are double stacked. Thanks for your time. For more on visualizations, visit my blog, designerwpf.com. <laughs>